Hi, everyone. Let's talk about related versus unrelated diversification. Diversification can range from highly related, such as when you have more of the exact same kind of business, to highly unrelated, such as when there's no obvious relationship between the businesses. So let's look at some of the ways that diversification can be related and unrelated. First, let's think of some categories along which we could classify something as related. Does it use the same knowledge and expertise? Can we use the same equipment and processes? Are we selling to the same customers or distribution channel we already sell to? Are we selling into the same or different geographic area? Can we use the same brands across the businesses? Are the business models of the businesses highly similar or different? Or is cash really the only thing that the businesses share? Let's look at a few examples, starting with highly related diversification. When Nike expanded from premium mass market running shoes into premium mass market basketball shoes sold through the same retailers it already uses, this leveraged the same knowledge and expertise, the same brand, the same equipment and processes, the same customers and geography, and the same business model. When Nike expanded into premium mass market apparel and other sports gear sold through the same retailers it was already using, this used different knowledge and expertise but the same brand. It used different equipment and processes, though probably still some shared logistics, and it was selling into the same customers and geography using the same business model. Now suppose Nike expands into premium mass market fitness monitors sold through electronics stores with a subscription service. This uses a different knowledge and expertise base. It's leveraging the same brand, but it's using different equipment and processes. There's some overlap in the end consumers, but it's a different direct customer, that is electronic stores versus sports shoes and equipment stores. And it's using a different business model because it's now making money off a subscription service. Now, suppose Nike begins opening an affordable pizza store called za to go only in its hometown of Beaverton, Oregon. This utilizes a different knowledge and expertise base, a different brand, different equipment and processes, selling to different customers using a different business model. Okay, I just made this one up to make a point. So now let's look at different recent diversification moves and think about how they were related and unrelated. Let's take Tesla. Tesla started out in the business of making a super premium electric sports car called the Roadster, which was sold directly to customers on a wait list and then personally delivered. It then expanded into the luxury electric cars Model S and Model X, sold through its own network of dealerships, and then into the near luxury Model 3 and Model Y, also sold through its own network of dealerships, and then into residential batteries sold direct, and solar roofing panels, also sold direct. All of the businesses share the same Tesla brand. All of the electric car businesses share some underlying expertise, equipment, and processes. The Model S, Model X, Model 3, and Model Y share a distribution model, and the Model X and Model S also share a positioning strategy, luxury, as do the Model Y and Model 3, which have the positioning strategy of near luxury. It's easy for us to see the vertical relationships between solar roofing panels to make electricity and batteries to store electricity to electric cars which use electricity, but these businesses require fundamentally different expertise, equipment and processes and distribution channels. Let's do another one. In 1999, Jack Ma and his friends founded Alibaba, a platform that helps businesses find and buy goods from other businesses, that is business to business or B2B. Alibaba did not take ownership over any of the goods. It just helped buyers and sellers find each other and charged a commission on sales, and it also sold advertising on the site. It later created a new platform called Taobao that offered consumer-to-consumer, -consumer, that is C2C sales, with the same basic business model and technology. Don't hold inventory, make it easy for sellers to create listings, and guide buyers to find the products they want while charging commissions and selling advertising. It was a different brand and served different customers, but it was based on the same basic expertise, equipment and processes, and business model. Later, Alibaba would create Alipay, a mobile payments platform that partially leverages the same brand, serves many of the same customers, and has a similar business model. It uses some of the same platform management processes, though it also required some different, aka financial, expertise. Alibaba also created a business-to-consumer, that's B2C, platform called Taobao Mall, 
later called Tmall, that again leveraged the same platform expertise and resources it had honed with Alibaba and Taobao. Then Alibaba created Sinow, a logistics network that links warehouses, distribution centers, and delivery companies. Mirroring Alibaba's strategy for e-commerce, Sinow owns no warehouses and employs no delivery personnel. Instead, it just coordinates them efficiently, enabling participants to confidentially exchange information, provide real-time status on deliveries, and more. Sinow leverages Alibaba's platform expertise much of the same expertise and processes of its platform businesses and serves the same customers and suppliers it had worked with in its other businesses. Data on these suppliers and customers was now one of Alibaba's key resources. It knew what sellers were selling, what buyers were buying, and it was extremely well positioned to design an efficient logistics system to meet their needs. Thus, even though most of Alibaba's different businesses have different brands and they serve a range of customers, they also have a high degree of sharing of expertise, equipment and processes, and business model. So to sum it up, businesses and activities in a firm can be related in different ways, some of which are more important than others. It is useful to think about what resources are being shared and what resources aren't, and how crucial those resources are to competitive advantage. For Tesla, having electric car expertise and a compelling brand was very important. For Nike, a brand synonymous with athletic achievement and deep reach into its distribution channels, that is, its customers, was very important. For Alibaba, its expertise in creating platforms to connect buyers and sellers while using the data to optimize efficiency was its most important resource.